Hello and welcome to Cinema Savvy and welcome to a brand new movie review. Today is just myself, George, and I am going to be reviewing the new Netflix documentary, Pele. Um, if you haven't already guessed by now, this is, of course, on the football player, one of the greatest football players of all time, uh, which is going to be a phrase that comes up quite a lot, actually, in the next couple of minutes. Um, we've been very fortunate that Netflix have given us another early screener, and I was very excited to see this uh, as a big football fan, as someone that's been to many games. And football's not really something we've had a chance to discuss on the channel before, so I was really excited to be able to cover this one. Um, we're gonna, there's a lot to say about this, obviously, um, there's not really spoilers. Uh, he won the World Cup three times. You will know that. So luckily, I don't have to hide away from some things like that. However, before I get into it, I am going to go over some of our more de newer details for people that may not have seen the channel before or don't know what we're doing. So if you want to find out what we're doing, what videos we've got, do follow us on Facebook, Cinema Savvy, Twitter at Cinema underscore Savvy. We're back on Letterboxd, which is at Cinema Savvy, and we have a link to T Public Merch in the description below. Um, but yes, uh, sports documentaries. Uh, this isn't something we've really had the chance to discuss before. Me and Tate have both done, well, we've both seen Senna. Uh, we've also seen a couple of other films. The, the channel covered Rush. We've really done more F1 stuff than football. Uh, and th there's a debate to be had. So I want you guys to comment below. Uh, what footballers do you want to see have documentaries made in the future? This could be uh, footballers, maybe teams, eras, like the Invincibles, or certain individuals, coaches, managers, scouts, anything. So if you've got an idea for something, on, someone or something you'd love to see covered, comment it down below because I'm interested to see what you guys think of that. And also, I want to just see some more sports stuff because we don't get many documentaries. That's something really worth saying. So... Uh, one of the main things with this documentary is that it is directed by David Trihorn and Ben Nicholas. Now, they I've not seen any of their previous films. I know that they, one of them worked on the Kenny Dalglish film that came out a couple of years ago, another documentary, and the, one of the other ones speaks Portuguese, which is my first point of discussion. When this film releases on the 23rd of February, make sure you turn off the English dub, put the native Portuguese language on, Turn on English subtitles because you're going to be able to hear this properly. Pele should not sound like a posh English person or just anyone that isn't Pele. So that's my main thing with this. I was very fortunate Netflix got in contact with everyone to let us know that you can switch the settings around because I didn't want to watch an English dub of this. That's the main thing. But now getting into the actual documentary, this straight away is a film I'm recommending for everyone to see. Even if you're not into football, uh, this film actually hit a lot harder than I thought it would. So... This is very specific for a player. You know, as I said, the greatest of all time, people will argue. I was really worried that this is going to be one of those documentaries that sits there for an hour and a half saying, This is why I'm the best ever. This is why I'm the best ever into his family. This is why he's the best ever. This is why he's the best ever. And there's a time and a place for stuff like that. You know, I absolutely adored The Last Dance. And yes, that very much is Michael Jordan and them saying he is the best ever. This is why this is how entering half the NBA. And when this was announced, I was like, oh, is this another Netflix documentary that's going to play like that? Is this their football version? And I'm so relieved that this wasn't that at all. Uh, this documentary is set literally between 1950 and 1970. For those of you that don't know, that is obviously the era in which Brazil won three out of four World Cups. They're the four World Cups that Pele appeared in. And to this day, he's the only player to have won three World Cups. So that was a massive thing for me, was that they straight away they didn't have the internal debates that people have online because you can't really compare it. You can have your opinions of who you think the best of all time is, but can you really compare, you know, Pele back then to Messi now? I think you can to a point, but in terms of outright, maybe not, maybe more Maradona, maybe I'm being a hypocrite, who knows? But I think that was something that was really important for this. And another thing, the fact that obviously was focusing on the football, I was not expecting the real life politics at the time, which I had no, next to no knowledge about, you know, I didn't know much about Brazil during the time. I've not known much about their history as a country, bar the sports stuff, bar obviously Senna in Formula One and more Santos and Pele and the Brazilian teams over the years and, of course, modern day sports hosting the World Cup and the Olympics. So I was quite shocked at some of this. I had no knowledge of this. So straight away, that's a, another massive compliment for this production that it covers the real life politics at the time. It's shows sort of Pele in this situation of he represents the country as an individual and he's he's gracious in saying that he says it right at the beginning of the film that you know it's the country he was born in and he owes it he owes them everything and I think that's what's fascinating you know in this modern football debate of you know players that play for their club over their country um that's a very interesting debate not for a film channel but it's quite nice to see an old school thing like this where players are playing for their country and 
when you're getting this B-roll footage, which is another massive thing of all this remastered footage from the 1950s, from the 1960s and, and in the 70s, I have never seen a remaster of, of any sports stuff to this level. Formula One's not done it. Football's not done it. You get the odd colorized thing, but getting pure 1080p 4K footage on some of these scenes, even jumping ahead at the 1970 World Cup, I'm sure you've all heard of the Gordon Bank save against Pelé. Seeing that in modern technology was quite scary because it looked like it could have been recorded five, ten years ago, not 50 plus years ago. So um, straight away, production design, this is right up there with any documentary I've seen. Uh, they Shall Not Grow Old is one of the classic ones where it was colorized, it was made into HD. That was done so well. Uh, I would be very intrigued to see if they're working on this. And obviously, we know that there's a Beatles documentary that's going to be very similar to that, obviously by Peter Jackson too. But back to the Pele documentary, I think that's something that's really uh, hit hard was seeing those footage, seeing how football was back then, because we get the clips on YouTube and we get the black and white stuff or the odd thing we've seen. But to sort of get all the multiple camera angles that we don't normally see, I thought that was a really fascinating choice by them. And, and the big thing with this is the editing that, Yes, this is sort of set between 58 and 70, but we kind of have a current day stuff. Obviously, they're interviewing Pele as well, uh, he, a lot of his old teammates, his, his managers as well, and you're getting to see them around the table, laughing with one another, catching up as friends. It's the kind of things you expect from a documentary. It's it's not trying to be edgy, uh, and it doesn't need to be edgy. This wants to tell the story of, of Pele's international career, and it does it so well. Uh, and I think that's a really big takeaway for me from this. Um I don't have massive amounts to say, uh, but going into this again, this is easily one of the best sporting documentaries of the last few years. And this is something all you football fans at home are going to want to see. I'm not going to tell you what happens in 1958, 62, 66, and 70. You can, if you don't know that, you will obviously know to watch that. But I am recommending this purely based on how they remastered the footage. The fact that they don't put Pele's ego at the front of things. You know, if you want to get into that debate, there's no way Cristiano can make Ronaldo can make a documentary and not say he's the best ever or have them kind of moments, the stuff he's done on TV for years. And of course, this has been edited to a way which every documentary does to make the individual look better than what they are. But when the when the politics and the dictatorships of Brazil come into it, it raises questions and it's fascinating to hear the insight from some of Pele's teammates, from some of the politicians who were interviewed for this at the time who admit they'd done wrong. There's so much going on, but this never loses sense of what it is. And they don't just bring in politics for the sake of it. It all builds towards the 1970 World Cup, which is, as you can tell, the, the climax of the film. So this has been a very short review. But this review is to say that I absolutely recommend this. Check this out. This is being released on the 23rd of February. Uh, this is going to be one for any football fan to watch and for people at home that don't know much about football, who think it might even be called soccer. I would also recommend to check this out as well because he ultimately he played in America if you are calling it soccer. So this has been my review. Again, a bit short, a bit different. It's just me by myself, but there's a lot of things happening on the channel right now. So do comment along, as I said. Let us know of any other documentaries you'd love to see football-wise or maybe even sports-wise. You know, we had Last Dance. We've got a Tom Brady series in the works. We've got F1 to Drive to Survive. We've got so much going on. So comment below which documentaries you want to see. You've got my two cents. My, unfortunately, mine's already in production. They commissioned an Invincibles documentary last year. So whenever the hell that launches, I will be covering that first thing. However, if you are new to the channel, you'll know what we do. We don't obviously do sport reviews much. We normally focus on the kind of normal film stuff. So tonight, if you're watching it before 8 p.m., we're going to be debuting the Cinema Savvy Awards. This is me, Chris, and Tate's spin on the Oscars. We're going to be doing 10 videos across 10 weeks, 14 categories, and we're each going to pick the best film we've ever seen that is particular to that, starting tonight with best visual effects. So be sure to join us for that. And starting on March the 1st, we have the Infinity Saga Retrospective. That's going to be a incredibly interesting series where we look back at the entire Infinity Saga from Iron Man through to Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, we're in the early stages of recording that. Now we've got a couple under our belt by the time you see this. And we're excited to share so much more with that. So do stick around for that. And of course, we have the One Division reviews every Friday at 8pm. Easily one of the stand-ups of the week. We've only got two, three more episodes left by the time this goes up. So be sure to check that out. Again, it's theories, it's speculations, it's our thoughts on the episodes. And as I said, once more, social media, Facebook, Cinema Savvy, Twitter, at Cinema underscore Savvy, Letterboxd, Cinema Savvy, and Public link in the description below. 
Uh, and I want to thank everyone for watching this, for checking this out. I said, let me know what you think. Do comment below, comment with your thoughts when you do get to watch this documentary, or maybe there's some decent football documentaries you've already seen. But until the next time, see you then.